All right. Well, welcome to today's webinar. It's a snap, Creating 3D Models with Just a Camera, presented by Patrick Rodriguez. Just a little bit about Microdesk before we begin. Microdesk is a design technology consultancy that combines the leading software tools from Autodesk, Oracle, Google, Adobe, and ESRI with the latest methods, including building information modeling and virtual design and construction to provide business and technology consulting services to help companies successfully plan, design, build, and operate land and buildings. Microdesk has 11 offices nationwide, and we offer training courses on leading design software and applications for professionals and media, television, and entertainment in the Los Angeles, California area. For more information, visit www.microdesk.com. All right, a little bit about today's presentation. Um, today's presentation will be presented by Patrick Rodriguez. Patrick is a media and entertainment solutions specialist based out of Microdesk Los Angeles office. He provides training and consulting services to support clients with the visualization processes, the workflow, and best practices. Patrick's experience began with VFX pre-production and today extends into concept illustration and design, storyboards, modeling, rigging, texturing, rendering, animation, layout, animation, and more. He previously worked for lar several large film studios, including DreamWorks, Lucasfilm, South Park, Sony, and Marvel Studios. His list of credits include Star Trek, Iron Man 2, Cowboys and Aliens, Pirates of the Caribbean on Stranger Tides, The Incredible Hulk, and Thor. Patrick is committed to sharing his knowledge and passion for art and film by teaching and lecturing at Studio Arts, the Costume Designers Guild, Art Center, and the Art Directors Guild. He received his Bachelor of Arts in Art from Santa Clara University in California. All right, just a few logistics before we begin. In order to minimize any background distractions, you are all on mute for the duration of the session. If you have any questions during the presentation, please type them into the question area of the webinar toolbar to the right of your screen. Um, if you do have any questions, Patrick will address them as, a, um, as he can at the end of the presentation. If we run out of time, we'll provide you with our contact information so you can follow up with us. And so now, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Patrick. Hello. Um, uh, thank you, Megan. <clears throat> uh, I am uh, Patrick Rodriguez, and I will be presenting uh, One Two Three D Catch. All right. One of the things that I, I definitely wanted to add to that slide that we just were looking at was that uh, you can capture these three D models with just your smartphone. Uh, so you can do it with a camera as well, but uh, the the real revolution in, in this is that, uh, or one of them, is that you can do this with just your smartphone. And that's what I did. Now you're going to see my smartphone here. I hope there's nothing embarrassing. But on this first slide, you're going to see on the far left, uh, just there at the App Store, if you type in 123D Catch, it will take you to one result, and that is Autodesk's 123D Catch. And if you don't have it on your phone yet, it won't say open. It'll, of course, it'll say um, free. Okay, because this is the free version, and <clears throat> actually you can upgrade, but we'll talk about that in a minute, uh, to the more commercial version. But the free one is just basically to try out and take pictures of your, you know, your family or objects that are in your house just, just for fun and to explore the world of, of 3D and um, take pictures for your, for, for your own for your own use. That you can take travel pictures and things like that, things, places you go and whatnot. All right. So once you uh, uh, have it installed on your phone or, or your smartphone, you'll see in the second, second slide it says Autodesk. And there's a bunch of Autodesk op applications on here. Um, I use Sketchbook. I played around with 1, 2, 3D Make. And, and the, this is a, like a creature viewer. The creature creator is on your iPad. The fluid effects is fun. And you've got an FBX viewer um, and uh, some other applications by Autodesk. In the top left is the 1, 2, 3D Catch. And you'll notice that. Um, when you click on that, the, the third screen on your right is what you'll get. Now, the, uh, it looks pretty sparse. It just says My Feed. Um, you have to actually click on one of these two icons on the top left or right um, in order to 
to do anything. I, it's a, I guess the idea that they are championing, championing yeah. is that you would uh, follow other people, and it's kind of like a, a social network of people who are into this technology. Um, if you click on the left, you'll see I've got my username here, Patrick Rodriguez213, and you'll notice below that you got my feed for like things that I'm sending out, like 3D captures that I've made and I'm sharing with people, my activity. Um, you know, you've got these little hearts under popular, so you can rate other people's work and your own. Um, recent is is just a, a what people have been capturing recently. Featured is what Autodesk thinks is really cool. The A here with the one two three D three D after it in the middle slide here is is just uh, all the other applications that Autodesk um, uh, has that are in this kind of free world. And you'll you you saw a couple of them in the last slide, and I'll show a few more in a couple slides ahead. And then there's Go Premium. And Premium, we'll talk a little bit about that. The idea with Go Premium is just that you pay a fee every month and then you can actually use these for commercial use. On the right is what happens if you click on Home. Um, and I have a little circle, or an orange circle around that. And what you see over here are a couple of captures that I've taken and the dates and the names and whatnot. And uh, you can click on Favorite. I don't have any followers. I'm not following anybody yet. Uh, and then you can sign out. Now you do need to sign in in order for this app to work. So you have to create a username and uh, a password. But you can use the same one that you use for your um, your other Autodesk products. If you are a um, subscription um, person to, like, say, Maya or, or other applications like Mudbox, uh, you can uh, use that same application. I believe it's the same one you use on, on, at the area, I believe. Now this next slide. Uh, shows you kind of getting into the process of it. So I'm going to talk about the process of taking photos. Now this photo is a bad photo. You can see on the left here it's a little blurry. I've um, got this coffee cup, but this wasn't uh, one that I was actually wholeheartedly going after. I was just trying to take a screenshot of this, of this section of the process. Because when I am taking the pictures, I'm really involved in trying to get it right. So first of all, you're going to need a lot of light. Uh, you, you'll see in a lot of the examples that they're outdoors, and that's because just the full glare of the sun um, is kind of what you need in order to illuminate your your subject or just some really intense studio lights. Um, it just seems like this, this uh, process needs a lot of light. Now, then there's the caveat. If you just have, uh, if you're taking this picture at high noon where there's a lot of really stark shadows, you'll find that the, um, that won't work so well either. So there's kind of a happy medium where you want to take your pictures maybe in the shade but on a, on a clear day, or if it's overcast. Uh, or, but try to avoid high noon. If you can take them in the, in the um, beginning of the day or towards the end of the day, that'd probably be best. All right? You are taking pictures. If you're taking pictures of an object, like I have this coffee cup, um, you might want to, you, you, what would help you to do a good capture would be to place little um, markers around your object. This can be as simple as, placing post-its with little squiggles on it that you write with permanent marker, like a, a couple of squiggles on one post-it, uh, maybe a star on another, a circle on another, just big, bold little objects, and place them around your 3D object just to uh, uh, help, help the process. You might want to place your object on a background like a flattened newspaper. That can work, too. Just anything to kind of help uh, map what's, what's, it, what's uh, on the base and what's the object that you're trying to capture. Never reposition your object while you're, while you're um, capturing it. Uh, if you have to move your object for any reason, you might as well just restart the process. Um, get as close as you can and frame up. Hold your camera still. And hold it as perpendicular as you can to the object. Like just super, super flat so that you get a side view or a front view. But don't try to tilt your camera to get the top or the bottom. You just really want to get the side view all the way around. You'll want to wait for your camera to focus. And you'll want to hold it as steady as possible. If you could do a tripod, I would recommend it. But you just want to hold it. There's a little icon that doesn't showing, it's not showing up right now. But in the bottom right of your screen, you'll see a little light blue um, indication icon of your camera. And as you move your camera left to right or rattle it, it kind of shows you that icon with little ghostings of the camera to show you that you're, you're moving too much. Take little baby steps around your app. This center circle I put here on purpose to kind of show you that this light blue square is showing you where you are. Okay, And then if you look over to the left, you'll see these little kind of 
darker light blue squares that are in the circle on the bottom there. And what those are showing you is where you've successfully taken pictures around the object. So as you work your way around the object, it'll tell you where you've been successful and where you've missed. So if you haven't taken one at this certain angle that it needs, it just won't change to blue after you've passed it. And so you can go back and take that picture and fill in that in. Now, all of these in the bottom circle are well, all, like I was saying, the flat pictures. So even this picture I have here of this coffee cup, not, not the best, because you're seeing a bit up the top. So what happens is that means that you're not getting under the lip of this. So it's important that you do as, as, as uh, true sideways as you can. And then, once you've worked your way around and made a complete circle, then you can make your way around again, but then lift your camera up over your head a little bit or just higher. I know you want to be able to see the screen, so you may not be able to get it over your head, but lift it up higher and tilt it down. And what will happen is, is that these little, there's um, six of these squares that are on the top here, and what will happen is, is that they will highlight to tell you that you're, that you're at the right angle. So that's how you get the top of your object. All right. And then once you've taken the pictures, you'll look over here on your right and you'll see that there's all these pictures. Now, there's, this is not as many as you will need to have a finished capture. You'll need as many as there are squares here. So I think I counted something like uh, 18 or 20 pictures on the bottom and then there's six at the top. So you can have anywhere from like 24 to, to 60 pictures here. And you'll want to click on each one. And when you do, you click on it, you look at it, you evaluate it, you can delete it and then retake it later and all that. Um, and uh, before you even submit them for the 3D process. Okay. Once you do, there's a button up here at the top right once you're satisfied with your pictures. And you can click on it. There's a light blue on this gray background, which isn't helping. But just trust me, on the top right it says submit. So you just click on that. And you'll know, go to um, the next state, which is over here. Um, and if you're just starting a new capture, you can click on this plus sign. But over here where it says start new capture, I have a couple of finished ones, and then this bottom one it says transmitting photos. And that's what will happen is it will start transmitting the photos. This little blue bar will start to grow slowly across while it's sending all the photos off to the cloud. And sometimes it'll fail and it'll give you, it'll, the line will turn red and it will say the server is too busy or whatnot or failing so you just have to retransmit later. I run into this and at times you may just need to go get a cup of coffee and come back and then resubmit because if the server's overworked or whatever it will, it will just, um, it won't help to just keep resubmitting and resubmitting and resubmitting. Now over here these little these little boxes here, you'll see as there's processing photos. So it first has to transmit them all. So you can imagine you've got a mm, couple of megabytes each and you're submitting 30. So you're, you're talking about you know 60 megabytes at least up sending it up to the cloud. It takes a little bit of time. But then once it's done, it's still not done because once it's done sending the photos, then it needs to process them. And you'll notice that it even has this little funny um, quip here where it says thinking some more and then finalizing. And it's got a few of those where it's just it's just taking all the 3D data and it's or the 2D data and it's trans and it's it's turning it into um, the 3D data. It's a process called photogrammetry. And once it's done finalizing, then you'll go um, and you'll be ready to go up online. And then you can do some editing of the data before you download it for um, either um, turning it into a part of a model that you're working on, or uploading it up to, um, I believe it's Shapeways, but some 3D printing place. So you need to uh, get online and, 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 and uh, sign in. You'll see in the top right here it says sign in. So you use the same uh, username and password that you created at the, at the uh, iPhone level, or you'll use the same one that you've created for your other one in your iPhone in here. And it says meet the entire family, and this is just a nice snapshot of the other programs that they make. So. Um, I'm familiar with um, the Creature one, Mesh Mixer I love. Mesh Mixer is great if you're going to do a 3D um, print of, a, of a, some work that you've done. This is a great application for finding places in your model that are too weak or won't be supported or creating supports for your model and that a lot of it is done automatically. Uh, you can sculpt in it, you can go nuts. This 123D Sculpt is a, uh, an iPad application. Um, let me even mention this, Mesh Mixer actually is actually a a desktop application, and it runs on both Mac and PC. It's a very powerful application. It's amazing that it's, it's just lumped in here with all of these other um, kind of fun apps, like for instance the, um, the 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 Creature app, where you can have fun. Although you can export an OBJ of that as well. The the One Two Three D Make is for kind of making uh, 
like boxes, like a card, a cardboard creation of what you've made. So it's a lot, of, a, a lot for visualization, but also for just for fun for the family and whatnot. So these are all kind of a hodgepodge of different things. Like the circuit one is for designing circuits. All right. Now down below, it's also this slide is really good, or this web page is really good to show you that this one two three D catch application. It's called one two three D catch. It's something you can download for your PC, so you can do your editing all on your computer, or uh, you can. Um, take capture the pictures and whatnot with your iPhone or iPad and then on the right here it says launch the web app and that allows you to work on your Mac if you don't have a PC and you can we'll sh I'll show you in a second how to download and install the plugin that you'll need on Safari or if you're in Chrome you can just um, start um, uh, using the application so here it is if you're in um, Safari you will need what's called uh, a WebGL and so on, on Safari you you might try to launch it and you'll see that it says you know you need to you need to turn this on uh, in your browser and it's pretty simple you just open up your preferences oops let me go back there open up your preferences and under advanced there's a checkbox here you need to check that says show develop menu and menu bar and then under Safari you'll see develop and then you just go down here and check on enable WebGL then by doing that then you'll be able to download and install the application right in your browser so here it is. Download Autodesk 123D Catch. Okay. Once you click on that, then in your if you have this browser a download button in your browser, then you just click on that and it shows you what you're downloading. And then if you don't have this little button, you can change the uh, preferences of the uh, of your Safari browser by right clicking and then changing what's up there. But I just like this because it actually uh, by clicking on this little magnifying glass, it takes you over to the Finder window and shows you exactly where you're downloading it. But it's going to your downloads folder, so you can just navigate there, and it's just as easy. Then once you found this little application, you double click on it, and then it opens a window that looks just like this, and you have this little box. You double click on this, and then it opens up this window, and it's just as an installer like any other. And you're installing 123D Catch, and you can see here there's a bunch of steps, but I just I just uh, I didn't screenshot every single one of them. Click continue, and then at the bottom here, once you have success, you just close this window, and you have it installed and I believe you'll have to restart Safari. But over on the left, you can see that there's Chrome, and then on the right, there is uh, Safari. And uh, these two are identical. The only reason why this picture is different is because these, um, these little graphic here is animated, so I just took a snapshot at different times of the animation. But they're identical there. This is the 123D Catch application. Uh, once you select one of these, you'll see a little blue square around your uh, project. And then you just click on this button down here that says Open Selected Project. Once you do that, if you have, like in my case, I had a fairly complex capture. And what you'll notice is that um, it, there was a lot of extra junk around my subject. And it asked me if I really wanted to open this large file. And I said yes, and then it continued chugging along. But it finally did open. So you can open a pretty large uh, uh, capture right there in your browser. And then I'll go over how all these different buttons work. Okay. So here you can see the same thing. And you'll notice that this is a little bit orange here. And I'll go over that in just a second. Let's start from the left. When you when you hover over this little button here, these little three bars, this flies out and you can you get your 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 uh, your new and your new project open, project edit it, save it, save a copy. You can print, you can send it somewhere. You can send your project somewhere. You can place an order okay, for your 3D print. You can export an STL, which is the, th the 3D print um, file, the, the 3D printing file that you'll need for it's the most common one. Excuse me. And then you'll see export OBJ, which is the most a very, very common 3D uh, file so that you can take that into almost any 3D application. Project information, information, and you can share your project. So that's what's underneath these three bars. Then across the top, you'll see that there's a save button, there's an undo and redo, and then there's this little arrow, which is like a selection arrow. And when you click on this, then you can select the parts of your model that you just want to throw away, that are not really part of the uh, the file or the the part of the object that you want to maybe print or work on in 3D. And once you draw a red, it, it makes a little red lasso. Once you draw a red lasso around the parts you don't want. Then you just confirm down here at the bottom and say delete. And you can change the size of your selection um, like a tool because not only can you draw like this around an object, 
you can paint on objects as well. So you could paint the bottom of him if you just wanted his shoulders up to his head and you wanted to paint the rest with this, with this selection tool and then hit this delete, it would delete all that. This next button is an extrude tool. And what it will allow you to do is to maybe if you had a base that was too short, you could extrude it a little bit so that, it had, so that your model was sitting on something. And then this is your, uh, it's called a uh, plane, um, what's it called? Um, it's a plane cut. And what it does is it cuts across the bottom of your model or the top, but, but it's what it's made for is you, you cut in, in, in that uh, it will have, your model will have a, a flat surface to sit on. So that's what that's for. So if you have a little raggedy surface at the bottom, you can cut it, make it flat, and you can rest your object on it. And then this, these two little arrows that are swimming around like this, like yin and yang symbols, they are just so you can rotate your object in 3D space. So it's not orbiting around your object like a camera that's flying around in the scene. It's more like your camera's staying still and you're rotating the object either to camera, away from camera, or whatever. But let's say that your model is essentially looking the opposite direction and you want it to rotate so that's pointing right down the z-axis. So you could do that. Now over here, this first little button here is for, these are kind of your dummy buttons. This first one's for like smooth, so you can smooth parts of it. And then this next button is for, um, Oh, what's that next one? Um, let's see, we've got smooth heel. The heel brush is for when you've got holes. So if you have like a hole in your model, you click on this and it will like take care of all of the holes. Okay? You can also use your delete and fill if you wanted to do that. But this is for if you want to magically do it. That's kind of why it has the little sparkles around it. Uh, you can see it better up here. And then this last, this last button is for, um, it's called, let's see, it's called, uh, cleanup. And what it does is it automatically takes all the other objects that are in your scene that are not your main model and throws them away. But sometimes you have to kind of make sure that it knows that that's the case. So, um, so that's kind of a catch-all button that you have to kind of make sure that uh, you've thrown away maybe the biggest parts. And, but if there's little tiny bits and pieces, it'll recognize those as garbage and throw them away. On the right here, you'll see this little um, zoom in of this area here. And this is where you would navigate. So this top button is for you to uh, fly your camera around the object. And the next one is for you to pan. So you can move the object around so you can see parts of it. <coughs> Excuse me. And then the last button is for zooming in and out. Now, the last button, well, this third one. And then the, the, the next one is for fitting your object, OK? So you can fit the, um, all of your, your, if you get lost while you're navigating around, which, I, you know, just because you're, rotating around and you get kind of in a strange gimbal lock or something, you could easily um, want to just hit this button and it just frames everything up. It makes it a lot easier. And as you throw away all the extra garbage, it'll make the one part of your model that you want just frame right in the center. It'll also kind of clue you in as to where, where there are little bits that you don't need. This bottom button is just to look around. Now, this uh, application is called, uh, this is the web page for Recap. And what I'm showing you is 123D Catch. And the whole idea is that uh, one to three D catch is more of a um, um, uh, for use with your iPhone and um, for the convenience. And if you want to use the um, the updated one to three D catch, there's like a professional level version. That's really so that you can um, profit from this, like use this in commercial work. Um, but the Recap and Recap Pro, what those are are those are for doing surveying of large areas, or for doing very high resolution. Um, processing of, of images like uh, statues or, or things that you, that you want to, um, to basically do a very similar thing that you're doing with the, with the um, 1, 2, 3D catch. They're both uh, photogrammetry, um, but the Recap and Recap Pro are much higher resolution. You can send very large um, photos of your objects to get very high, um, high resolution um, feedback. Now also, um, so you can get high resolution models, but also you can use laser scanning. Um, so you can use laser scanning data data with Recap and Recap Pro. All right. Now I'm going to show you uh, a little bit about uh, what what I got back. Once I uh, let me just uh, I'll just go back really quick. Once I cleaned up my model, so you can see there's all this junk here. Once I cleaned that all up, okay, and I was happy with it. Then what I did was I went over to I exported it. Let me just maybe I can show you how I did that um, by just showing you here. Export OBJ, and I just clicked on Export OBJ, 
export OBJ. And then I was able to um, open that file in a 3D program. Um, and in this case, I used Maya. Okay. So here is um, actually this is the 3D data I got. You can see it's very dense. And uh, what I, the first thing I did was um, as I took that model and I, and I reduced it, um, I went over here to mesh and I did a little bit of a reducing of it. So you can see between these two, the one on the left is, is um, the one on the left is absolutely blue almost. And the one on the right, you can start to see some, some of the uh, texturing. If I turn off the wireframe, you can see that there's very little difference actually. Um, but the one on the right is much more, um, it's much less dense. So I'm just going to hide this one. And I'm just going to move this one back over to zero really quick here. Um, if I can get there. Let's see here. OK. I have this little recording thing here that I was just kind of navigating around. Just type in zero there. I'm back to zero. And if F to frame up on this guy. So what you can do is, uh, well, my purposes would be, um, is of course, you can 3D print this guy, but what you can also do, and this, I would probably want to do, go back and do a, a better ca um, capture of this guy. But to be honest, for this demo, this is all I needed. But um, you can see I got a lot of work given to me. This is pretty amazing. Um, and uh, like I said, I've, I learned a lot through, through trial and error and through taking the pictures, but you can always um, take a little bit more time and uh, take a few more photos and, and make sure that everything is um, like I, I, my first ones I did, I always had holes in the bottom here until I realized that, oh, I need to take the pictures like directly from the side and make sure that I'm not taking them down. It's really easy to like kind of have your camera looking down at the subject. Um, but once I've got this, and let's just say this is all perfect and everything, I, in Maya now, you can use your modeling toolkit and you can set your surfaces to live. So now that I've done that, I can come over to my modeling toolkit and I can quad draw right on top of this this capture that I did of this of this person. So, for instance, I could retopologize the whole head, you know, or I could even just come in here and kind of make him um, just plot these points right on top of him and kind of retopologize him. But at the same time, uh, right now I'm not doing that. Right now I'm just sort of making, say, a um, a part for him. Like maybe he's kind of a cyborg or something. And uh, so I can just sort of draw right over him, like so. And now I've made this mesh that's just sitting right on top of him. So you can just imagine the uh, possibilities that are just, just amazing what you can do with this. If I was to make some goggles for him, I could make ones that actually fit to his face. You know, if I was going to make a monocle here, I could, I could do that as well. So just... Uh, really um, personalized, um, say, suit that would actually fit this um, person, as opposed to if you had a, uh, if you had just a generic model, it wouldn't have the same kind of abilities here. And I can maneuver these points, and they are all still sticking to the object. And I see there's another ring here that I would, I could put in here. Let's finish up this ring and uh, okay, and then I can actually take this this um, surface that I've made. I'm going to turn off the, uh, the live surface here, and I could just literally extrude it a little bit, you know, from the surface, and I could create something that literally is his, that is, that is attached to him. And I could continue making like a whole suit or something that would literally fit him. If you um, were to 3D print this out at one-to-one -one scale at his height, exact um, height and width, you could, uh, you could put it on him and it would fit his bone structure. Um, so pretty amazing stuff you can do. And with that, I'm going to throw it back to you, Megan. Uh, let's see if we have any questions from the audience.
Thanks, Patrick. You're welcome. Really, really, really neat stuff. All right. Um, so I do have one question for you. How long did this entire process um, take you? Uh, well, I would say that uh, you probably want to do a couple just as practice runs. But once you once you got a feel for it, the actual taking of the pictures doesn't take very long. Uh, the people that I've taken pictures of, um, well, my, my seven-year-old son was, was didn't stand still 100%, but I almost got him. I really did almost get him. It was so close. I was so frustrated. But um, with the other people in my office that went around and took pictures of them, it really just takes like a couple of minutes to walk around them, and then maybe another couple of minutes to walk around to get the, the, the higher ring that you need, and you're done in like five minutes. So the, the hardest part is, is getting your workspace ready. I mean, we moved some tables and chairs so that I could walk all the way around the subject. Because you, you wouldn't want to like only have like a half circle around the subject and then like move the subject and do the other half. So you have to make a completely clear walk space all the way around the subject where you have like maybe a couple of feet from them. Um, and, and not even a couple of feet, but I mean a couple of feet from the camera to their face. So that means your body needs to have another few feet. Um, but yeah, so maybe uh, after you're set up and you're ready to go, you know, five minutes for taking the pictures. And then the uploading, that seems to be the, the, the one that's the uh, indeterminate factor. You, you can upload for a, a, you know, literally 10 or 15 minutes, or it can, you know, like I was saying this in my, earlier, there's sometimes there's a server error, and it can take you like 45 minutes, uh, maybe more, just waiting to resubmit and resubmit. And so it could take you that long to submit all the photos and have them all processed and finalized. And what they do is they basically send you an email and say, um, hey, your, your thing's ready to go. In fact, on my phone, it's more of a, a little reminder. Um, so you really don't have to sit and wait for that processing. You can go and take another capture and another capture and then submit them all later. You know, And then after they're all that process is done, then when you go online and you're working in the program 123D Catch, uh, it's very simple, just a few minutes once you've had the application installed, maybe 15, maybe half an hour if you're really trying to you know, decide how you want the bottom of the thing to be cut. You might want to fill in some holes. You might want to do some trial and error, maybe save a few versions, see what works the best. Um, but uh, and then submitting that file isn't, doesn't take that long because you can actually smooth out the whole thing like I was showing earlier. Um, and reduce it, and then you send it off. And so, you know, all in all, for, for um, getting such a exacting um, replication of what what you see in life, just with texturing and everything, um, it's it's a uh, it's a pretty it's a pretty good process. It depends How on your on your um, <laughs> connection speed too. How hard is what? All right. How hard is it to to delete the background objects, like the things that you don't want in your three D model? You know, those are uh, virtually instantaneous. I mean, as long as you're, uh, I would imagine that the, um, the, the hard, the, the, what do you call it, the application that runs on your desktop might even be, uh, the fact that it would be a little more stable and maybe a little faster. But even working in the web browser, you know, if you just draw a circle around those extra objects and just hit delete and they just disappear for the most part. Sometimes I had to do that process a couple of times. I, it almost seemed like there was a couple of models on top of each other. Um, but sometimes, it, it, again, because it's in the browser, you have to maybe you did delete it, but you have to hit refresh in order for it to show up. So there's a little bit of, I would say, a little handle jiggling trying to make it uh, make it work at times. But um, but again, for the price, it's it's unbeatable. Great. Well, thank you, Patrick. Um, I just have a few final resources that can help you if you'd like to learn more about today's content. Um, so we have a few upcoming free webinars. Um, coming up in September, we have a construction webinar about using Glue and Navisworks um, for simulation and analysis. Um, on September 30th, we'll be talking about how you can collaborate across the cloud with Bluebeam Studio. Um, Bluebeam is a PDF software that's um, really, really fantastic if you're wanting to share specific markups, edits. Um, very seamlessly. Um, in October, uh, we'll have um, have our next media and entertainment webinar, and that'll be presented by Patrick. Um, and we'll be discussing how you can create and edit video uh, files with Adobe Premiere. And then finally, at the end of October, we'll be talking to our construction 
um, people about how to make the transition to BIM, talking about how all of the software today is allowing people to to use um, Revit for for creating um, uh, really really information heavy models that that can be used all the way across um, the project process. Um, Additionally, I wanted to let you be aware of our media and entertainment training in our Microdesk LA offices. Um, we provide training on the latest design tools by Autodesk, Adobe, Modo, Rhino, SketchUp, and ZBrush right in our LA office in downtown LA. Um, those courses are all avail eligible for CSATTS reimbursement. Um, really, really fantastic content. If you would like to see the latest schedule and locations, visit us at www.microdust.com backslash master design. Um, if you would have any additional questions about 123D Catch or any of these software programs, please contact us. Uh, you can contact us at our website, www.microdust.com. You can give us a call at 1-800-336 3375 or shoot us an email. Um, our email address is webinars at microdust.com. We're on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, and YouTube. Um, we try to post our um, our webinars up in our the YouTube channel, Microdust channel, at least a week after um, every webinar. And if you'd like to register for any of those webinars I told you about earlier, please register on our website underneath the education tab. Um, under events slash webinars. Thank you again for coming to our webinar today. Look forward to seeing you soon. Bye-bye.